Okay. Well, Danny, after five straight wins, I imagine the mood in the camp is very buoyant at the minute. It is, yeah. Uh, it's been buoyant all season, really. I suppose there's a little bit of flatness around the place after Altrincham because it's your first defeat and a, and a pretty average performance. But since then and before then, it's been good isn't it? in terms of entertainment levels uh, and ultimately the three points uh, and points total in general. So, yeah, uh, everyone's buzzing. Uh, can't wait for can't wait for tomorrow's game, uh, and that's a good thing about Saturday Tuesday. Is that like the other night? You can enjoy the the Tuesday night after. You can enjoy the Wednesday, and then before you know it, you're back focusing on the next game. And that's what the Saturday Tuesday is. The positive of that is it does keep you focused on the job in hand and and don't sort of milk your victories too much so yeah we're uh, we're obviously pleased that the the results are going our way uh, but the old saying that you're only as good as your last game at the minute that was a a decent result the other night against Halifax but you know got to make sure we turn up tomorrow yeah I, am, I imagine that when you're on a, a winning run like you are you just want the games just to keep coming thick and fast don't you really yeah you do well yes and no I mean I think uh, if you suddenly had two or three sendings off and three or four injuries, you, you probably wait for a little bit of a break. But touch wood at the moment, we uh, got the odd red card, sadly. Uh, but fingers crossed, the injury list is, is staying to a minimum. So, you know, I've got a good squad to choose from. You don't mind the Saturday, Tuesdays. It's when knocks and niggles start to come in that uh, you, you're praying for a bit of a break. But fingers crossed, that doesn't happen to us. And when you're on a, a winning run like this, excuse me, <clears throat> do you do you want to keep that? excitement sort of building or do you also have to sort of keep everyone grounded is it sort of like keeping that balance type of thing <sighs> no i don't think keeping grounded because we've been here before haven't we we're at the top last year and uh, the years before that as well so you know this club's used to it the last three or four years being at the top of the league so i don't think it's a case of pe 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 keeping people grounded sorry especially the players uh, because they know our teams turn up like wildstone for example who who will be the underdogs uh, and they'll give it their all and they'll, they'll bring a big threat and before you know it a banana skins occurred on paper and we've got to make sure that doesn't happen tomorrow uh, from the outside looking in so we know they're going to be a, a very very strong outfit uh, in the mid table uh, which is which is you know great for, for a team like Wildstone and, and Stuart's done a great job there in charge and I'm sure they'll be looking to kick on to that next level this season uh, starting with an upset tomorrow against us so the boys are grounded uh, not getting carried away we just got to make sure we get those three points tomorrow. And I understand that Chesterfield have, have not won six league games in a row since the 2000-2001 season. So you've got a chance to make a little bit of history tomorrow. Yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? I suppose the only history we want to make is to, to be the first Chesterfield team to, to get out of the National League. So uh, that's the one we, we want to try and chase. But yeah, in the meantime, points win prizes. Just keep, just keep getting those points on the board. By, by any means necessary. Uh, a lot of thing I say to the players is win at all costs, and we are winning at all costs. You know, whilst playing well, uh, I think the gaffer was massively over pleased with the overall performance last night. But saying that, the players found a way to win, and he and us are obviously that's the main objective before every game to win. We want to play well, we want to dominate and batter teams. But if you don't do that, just win, and that's what we've been doing. But like I say, it means nothing if we suddenly take our foot off the gas tomorrow. It feels like a season where lots of club records could be broken along the way. Do you pay much uh, attention to those? No, too fair. I think, you know, I'm quite big on stats and that, but obviously yourself, you're the one who probably reminds me of, of records and, and history and that, which is great cause it's good to know. But, yeah, we're looking at the here and now, uh, and I think you can enjoy the record breaking once you've achieved your main objective, which we all know what that is. But, yeah, along the way, if we can break some records and you know, and uh, make our own little bit of history in, in, in the history book, you know, that, that's great. Uh, but believe me, the players, they, they take notice of it, but all they're worried about is winning and, and uh, getting, keeping up the top of that league. The 10-game marker is one that managers and, and coaches and, and pundits we all talk about, and, and after the 10 games this season, you're top of the league. So how sort of satisfied are you with uh, the start of the season? Very satisfied. It is just a start. We had a great start last year. Uh, and like I said the other day, it ended up with us being five minutes away from promotion to League Two at Wembley. So you never know how a season's going to unfold. You never know how a game's going to unfold, as we've seen recently. So uh, to do anything in any walk of life, you've got to sort of overcome adversity, uh, however that may come in any shape or form. And we did that the other night, and we've got to do that continuously to have any chance of success. 
But to answer your question, very good start of the season. To be top of the league, three points clear, in our hands with a long way to go. Uh, yeah, good position. And just a little bit more on uh, tomorrow's opponents. There seem to be a team who's sort of punching above the weight a little bit and they play some really nice football. We've had some good games against them, haven't we? Yeah, and uh, I think they're one of the few proper part-time teams. And what I mean by that is that I think they only train twice a week. Uh, so, yeah, I know that he's a good good bloke, Stuart, and he, as I keep saying, he's done well there, him and his staff. Uh, but, you know, all the compliments go out the window by the game, well, by the time the whistle goes tomorrow. And we have to crack on and do a job. But yeah, you know, I think it's disrespectful for me to say that they're punching above their weight. But I don't think it, I don't think it's disrespectful for me to say that they come here as underdogs. So uh, we've got to make sure we earn that tag of favourites tomorrow. Have you got some uh, tired legs in the camp after Tuesday night and the, and the ten men? Well, I'm sure they would admit it, even if they did, because uh, they want to keep their shirts. But uh, no, I think nowadays the way they're managed and trained and, and that their recovery days and massages, etc., the boys are looked after and they're, they're good to go, they're fresh. Uh, and anyone who's, who's feeling a little bit tight or niggles, we've got players to come in and, and fill their boots and take their shirt, even if it's on the short term. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure they'll be tired legs Wednesday morning, Thursday not so much, and today definitely not. Have you got any uh, fresh concerns that you can tell us about? No, not at the moment, no fresh concerns at all. Obviously it's sad we miss out on uh, on Tom tomorrow, but it gives a chance for someone else to come in and uh, hopefully help us on a, on a way to keeping that little gap at the top going. And do we know if the uh, the manager is going to be on the touchline or in the stand tomorrow? Yeah, I think he's in the stand tomorrow. Uh, so I had a chat this morning about the situation because uh, I think as we, one of my frustrations really is in the last few games is the, the new rule about one standing and it just causes carnage, doesn't it, in the dugout. So, yeah, I, I, I think I'll, I'll probably have the communication with the gaffer throughout, which, which we're allowed to do in the stand and, and whether Gary stands up uh, and I'll, I'll have the constant communication with the gaffer, that, that's yet to be seen. But I think it's important we do have that uh, constant flow with the manager uh, to try and get those messages across and try and make it as normal as possible. Uh, the work's done in the week get the players over that white line, it's over to them. Uh, so obviously uh, me, me and Gary, Bucky and the staff can hopefully uh, try and keep it as normal as, as it is tomorrow. Uh, it's not a huge stand here, so messages can be passed down through runners and that, like I say, which, which we are allowed to do. But yeah, I'll be in contact with the gaffer for an earpiece throughout the game. And yeah, hopefully it's not too much change. The main uh, change being that we don't win uh, and we, we want to win, we need to win. Uh, and we're doing our best to win. Cheers, Danny. Thanks no problem, Top man.